Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to start the Watcher tier list. Everyone's been begging for this for the longest time. And I didn't feel comfortable doing it for a while. Uh, simply because I wasn't skilled enough with the character. I hadn't played her enough. And then, last week, uh, chat gave me a lot of money. So, it's not about whether or not I feel comfortable doing this or not. It's about whether or not I got money. And I'll tell you, I did. I got a lot of money last week. Just yell, it's the with the tier list, baby. It's the week with the tier list, baby! Yeah, I noticed that the tier list, it's it's the best looking tier list that was on the tier maker website. It's got a it's got a duplicate of a couple of cards. I, I see that there's two crush joints. I see that there's two of a couple of things. The first card is Alpha. A controversial card, in my opinion, because it's it sucks. It sucks. It's awful. It really is. It's not that like super loved of a meme card. Like a lot of people like it, but then a lot of people also recognize that it's so fucking unplayable that it's just almost never worth taking, actually. Like, it's it's so fucking terrible. Can it be fun? Sure. But, like, the fact that you are needing to build up most likely at the bare minimum two turns if you have a really small deck and can alpha and then draw and then beta and then wait for omniscient. It's, it's, it's so, it takes so fucking, or omega, excuse me. So if you don't know what it does, omega, when you finally get it, you gotta play alpha to play beta. And then once you play omega, it then does 50 or 60 of upgraded damage per turn to every enemy in the fight. But one, that's not that much damage for the Watcher. <laughs> that's a weird thing to say. But 60 damage is not that much damage for the Watcher. Because the Watcher always has lethal. And on top of that, it takes so long to set up. You're, you're, you're spending all of your resources to do that instead of just opening up with a, with like a fucking sands of time on turn one with my lantern or some shit like it's it's just way too easy to do better things with the watcher let's look at the beta art terrible no it's awful it's terrible goes in f tier battle him at the start of each turn you add a smite to your hand the smites deal 12 damage and retain in your hand smites are okay the issue is with 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 uh battle him is a lot of times you feel like you want to Wait until you have a certain amount in your hand and then go into Wrath and deal a bunch of damage. And that's cool. But like I said, it's a little uh, like the same thing with Alpha. It's a little bit slow. I would rather just play a, a, like draw a conclude and play a conclude or have a Sands of Time or a Windmill Strike. It's just 12 damage that's just going to sit around in my hand. And it's mandatorily going to add one to my hand every single turn. It takes away from the value of me having you know extra draw in my deck if i'm going to retain a couple of them or it takes away the value of if i'm going to have a collect on top of it if i have runic pyramid like if i have a battle in my deck i just can't take runic pyramid one of the most powerful relics in the entire game no i, I i'm not a big fan of battle him i'll take it every now and then but it it's just a slightly better infinite blades and infinite blades isn't even that good so i'm gonna put it in the deep tier all right blasphemy now this is a good card now, this is a fun card. For one mana, you enter Divinity. If you don't kill everyone in the fight, you die. It's a very fun effect. It's amazing. Uh, the beta art of... Oh, it's Snekoi going into the trash. Ah. I get it, I get it. Either way, Divinity gives you a bunch of energy and makes all your shit deal triple damage for the turn. You don't stay in Divinity after the turn, so there's no point in using it. It's it, it's the upgrade of, of Blasphemy is very good because it just sits in your hand. You wait until you get some good stuff, and then you, you pop off and you one-shot everything. It's a good card. It's a good card. I like to take it early. You can definitely uh, play a deck pretty well around it. Um, yeah, it's good with the things that deal a bunch of damage. Uh, yeah, now Blasphemy, I'm definitely going to put in the A tier. You can add one to a lot of decks. It's not super clunky to keep around. It's good. It's good. It's good, but it's not perfection. Bowling Bash. You couldn't have guessed that it was going to have a... I, I, you know what? I rate this card lower because... Fat booty. Because it's just bowling. And I get it's bowling the sentries because it's really good against sentries, but you could have... You could have done something. Something better. Dog shit. BKR. Are you saying that Bowling Bash is dog shit? Are you saying that Bowling Bash is bad? Because I heavily disagree with you. I think that Bowling Bash is really fucking good. I mean, the fact that, like, it does 30 damage in the Tri-Centuries fight if you don't even have Wrath, 
that's insane it's really good i mean in the early game you're always looking for some from for some strike pluses uh just things that are strike but a little bit better and the watcher has a lot of them no i think i think the later in the game you go as well i think there's a lot of fights that benefit when you have when there's multiple dudes in the fight i mean you got the elites, the Act 4 elites, you got Donu Deka, you got the slimes in Act 3 that you fight 700 times throughout the act. I mean, you look at Reptomancer, it just kind of owns. Um, and I think Bowling Bash is a really solid strike upgrade. It's not one that I'm going to take every single time, but if I find it early, I'm pretty excited to take it. I think it can also kind of be pseudo AoE, just because it's a card that benefits off of having multiple people in the fight. It fucks up slavers in Act 2, and one in the chat, if you get really depressed anytime you roll into an elite and it's slavers, like, it's... it's it's tough. So I think that, that uh, Bowling Bash is in the B tier for Bowling Bash. Next up, Brilliance. 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 One, just so we get this out of the way, Brilliance doesn't work with Divinity. Divinity does not state, give you 10 Mantra. It simply says, enter Divinity. So Mantra is the unit that you gain, and when you get 10 Mantra, you go into Divinity. Except when you use Blasphemy. Blasphemy just puts you in there instead of giving you divinity so it doesn't work with it which sucks uh but i think brilliance is a solid card i mean it's not a good rare card it's kind of like glass knife for the for the silent it's okay it, it, it's it's i'm not i'm not excited if i'm seeing in my in my uh my my boss fight i'm seeing brilliance alpha and then another mediocre rare but it's okay yeah, it's a two times a strike at least. I mean, upgraded, it's literally one mana, 16 damage. And how many times are you watching me and I look at Ritual Dagger and I'm like, eh, it's a one mana, 15 damage at the very least. Like, that's pretty good. And you always got to remember that the Watcher is going in and out of Wrath. So one mana, 32 damage. Are you freaking kidding me? One mana, 32 damage alone is great. Then you got something like a Prostate because you're just trying to gain a little bit of block early in the game. It now becomes just ever so more useful. Um, yeah, and it... And, and it I think it's okay. I, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's great. Uh, once again, I'm going to put Brilliance in B tier. B for Brilliance. Carved Reality. Now, this is, a, this is a card that I'm not that big of a fan of. So, the upgraded version deals 10 damage. The, the downgraded version deals the same damage as a strike. And then it adds a smite to your hand, which when you upgrade, doesn't upgrade the smite. So, it's... I like the beta art, though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, at, at base level, it does it does a strike worth of damage and then adds a strike X2 to your hand that then you have to play one more mana to, to, to use. it. It's two mana, like, for two mana, 18 damage, eh, you know? Like, it's, it's not that good. I'm never excited to take one. It's almost like the only time that I'll ever take one is Act 1, the fight before uh, the, my first Elite, and if I haven't taken a good upgraded strike... I'll, I'll take it, I guess, but I'm never happy about it, and I never want it, so I'm going to put Carve Reality hey, in the D tier. What's the Miracle! Or, excuse me, Collect. Collect. We all know what Miracle does. It uh, the, the Collect, I think, is actually like an OP card. I have grown to very much like this card over recent, recent runs. It gives you a Miracle Plus, which is a card that retains your hand, costs two mana, and or zero mana, excuse me, and gives you two mana. So it's literally just a, hey, you need some extra shit? Here you go. And upgrading the Collect, even at zero mana, gives you one Miracle Plus, which is zero mana for two mana. Like, that's really fucking good. I think Collect is wonderful, especially for the fact that the uh, Watcher's starting relic is to start with one extra mana in your hand. So you can trade out the collect the Miracle for a Miracle Plus. It, it, I've, I've, I've very rarely found runs that I take a Collect that I don't want to use the Collect. I think it's very, very good. And I think it's probably a, a slightly underrated card, actually. You definitely probably want to stay away from taking it if you don't have a whole lot of draw in your deck, because drawing it uh, means you have to play it, and then you don't draw something better. And then by drawing it and playing it, you've wasted a draw. But if you don't have a lot of good draw, then when you get that extra energy, it, you don't really use that extra energy, right? Because you're drawing five cards, and it's not hard for the Watcher to go in and out of Wrath or into Wrath and get extra energy. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not that good. The uh, beta art is insane, though. Okay. <laughs> Collect is going in A tier. <laughs> the beta art is amazing. She's just going out to collect some berries, man. She's going out to collect some mana. All right. Come clued. <laughs> He's pulling the, the cultist. Okay. The, the Watcher has really good beta art, man. 
Uh, conclude is a wonderful card. This card is is a is a great addition to your deck in most cases, especially when you lack AOE uh, and you don't have a whole lot of things that end your turn. Maybe you're not taking too many vaults or things like that yet. Uh, I mean, 32 damage and wrath for one mana. Ah, 32 damage to everyone in the fight. That's literally just a brilliance, but to everyone. Great fucking shit, if you ask me. The end your turn debuff is... I'm never usually all that upset about it. The only th time that I'm upset about it is uh, when I'm not wanting... Or when I'm wanting to leave Wrath, and then you have to use it after you leave Wrath, so you only get 16 damage. But early in the game, this shreds pretty much every enemy. It's literally a one-mana immolate that doesn't have a downside. So, yeah. 100% conclude. Great card. I'm going to put it in the high B tier. The high B tier. Because it is an uncommon, so I'm not always finding it. Conjure Blade. Another one of the more... It's cool art. It's cool art, but not funny. And I like funny. Uh, Conjure Blade. I know you guys can't see the text. It is a one cost. So it, you're, you're shuffling an expunger into your draw pile. And uh, for the however much mana you play it, it will give you a card that does nine times X damage, which seems like a really good thing. But I think it's very similar to Alpha, where you have to play it then wait for the card to find its way around and do god forbid you draw it as the last card in your deck as your deck reshuffles so you're waiting for an hour to do big damage instead of just doing big damage like the watcher can do like why do i need to save up a bunch of energy sacrifice some health maybe from not blocking as well in order to get a card that is just an empty fist like i have to deal nine times four for it to be better than an empty fist like what the fuck is that, man? <laughs> it's just it's just underwhelming, man. It's underwhelming. I think it could be good in like a Runic Pyramid deck. Uh, maybe a deck that you have like uh, the, the the colorless card that allows you to find a random card in your deck or a, a, a specific card in your deck. It's fun with ice cream. Yeah, it's just a bit slow and the Watcher doesn't like to play slow. That's the issue. The Watcher just doesn't usually do well playing slow. So that's why I think it's pretty bad and I'm going to put it in D tier. Not unplayable, but most of the time I'm not excited about having it. Yeah. Consecrate. <laughs> Just got good beta arts, man. Consecrate. Zero mana AoE. Beautiful. Amazing. It's great. I like it. This is zero mana AoE. I'm not going to always want to add one to my deck, but I added one late into the deck. I think uh, in the, 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 the run that I uploaded today, I added one like midway through Act 2 because I needed a little bit of, of AoE. I think it's a good card. I, I got no issues with it. Zero mana, bunch of damage. Why not? You know, the Watcher usually has pretty good drawing capability. So, yeah, Consecrate. I'm going to put in the, the high B tier right next to Conclude. Both both of the, the, the Watchers, I feel like, main AoE sources, just glancing through all of the cards, one of its main AoE sources, I, I think is is probably... They're, they're good, man. They're good. The AoE sources are great. Crescendo card remains in your hand and you can enter Wrath anytime you want. The upgrade makes it cost zero even better. And the, the beta art also pretty good. Crescendo, a great card. One in the chat if you're always welcoming to add a Crescendo to your deck. At least one. I'm not saying you're going to add an infinite of them anytime you see them. But it, it usually in the uh, beginning, midway, end of the run, if I see a Crescendo, I'm like, yeah, I can probably fit a Crescendo here. Yeah, sure. I could use another way to get into Wrath. You got a rush down, Poggy. Like... You got a you got a crescendo and it's in it's and antithesis. It's uh antithesis, wherever the fuck it is. Tranquility, excuse me. You got its antithesis, the tranquility. To enter calm, they both sit in your hand. You not only have ways to get in and out of forms, which can work with a lot of things in the watcher's kit, but uh it's just an energy gainer. Like, especially if one's upgraded, you're just gaining energy that turn. Alright, crescendo, go in an eighth tier. It's a great card. I love it. Crush joints. Crush Joints. Now, this is a good card. This right here is a good card. It's the Watcher's one vulnerable card. It's awesome. Uh, it's amazing. Because Crush Joints combined with Wrath, which is a thing that you commonly use, it's triple damage. It's triple damage. Because the way that Wrath works, or the way the Vulnerable works, is it's plus 50% damage, and the Wrath doubles your damage. So you double your damage, and then you add 50%. That's your original damage. That's triple your damage. That's literally tripling everything. It's amazing. I love getting Crush Joints in the deck. I almost always want to upgrade it, though, 
because of the fact that you have to use it after a skill, it can be a little bit weird unless you've got the crescendos and things like that, because you usually want to use it after you get into Wrath or before you get into Wrath, but then if you use that and then get into Wrath, then you're using some mana beforehand and you're not dealing maximum damage. So this is like a must upgrade to me, usually, in my runs, but yeah, Crush Joints, you're also going in A tier. I fucking love this card. Cut through fate. Beta art. Just a different version of the actual art. Cut through fate is the most powerful one mana upgraded strike type card. We talk about them a lot. The strike pluses that you want to get. Cut through fate is the number one. It is the best in the entire game. Out of all four classes, out of colorless cards, out of everything. It is the number one. Yeah, there's two crush joints. Sorry, in the, in the tier list. I'll just add the other one up next to it. It can go in front of it, though. Yeah, the tier list is just a little bug that has a couple of them. <clears throat> yeah, the 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 cut through fate effect of being able to scry two or three cards uh, and then draw one of them is insane. It's that is so unbelievably powerful. Like you technically have the ability to dig four cards deep into your deck. That's fucking crazy. That is insane. I am wanting to add three or four of these to every fucking deck that I have. There is not a deck that you can build in the entire game. I'm not even just saying Watcher. I'm saying on any character that would not benefit from having two or three of these in the deck. I wouldn't even be surprised if the devs nerfed it. It's that fucking good. This is the highest of S tier card, the higher than possibly any other card in the entire game. If you replace all strikes with cut through fate, I don't see how you could ever lose a run. Deceive reality. The Sea Reality is, uh, so you, when you use the Sea Reality, you get a safety, which a safety is like a smite, except the, except for block. You retain it in your hand and you gain 12 block for one mana and it exhausts, right? It's a one-time use, 12 block. Thinking about it, right? It's a two mana unupgraded, 16 block. Upgraded is a two mana, 21 block. Both of those are good, right? Unupgraded, 16 block for two mana. That's an upgraded uh what's the what's the silent card that keeps everything in the or the, beta, the 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 defect card that keeps everything in your hand it's an upgraded version of that uh <clears throat> it's it's two upgraded defense unupgraded upgraded 21 block yeah equilibrium equilibrium that's the card that i'm thinking of 16 mana or it's a 16 equilibrium is a 16 block defect card that keeps everything in your hand which is a very powerful effect but upgraded does 16 block whereas this unupgraded does 16 block for two mana. And not only that, you don't have to use the mana on the turn that you use it. You don't have to use the safety. You can keep it in your hand and then upgrade it. Like I love upgrading a Deceive Reality. Absolutely, absolutely, lootly. I love upgrading a Deceive Reality because I mean, seven block, it makes it a defend plus. I want to use it more than defends and then I get extra block for later on. Poggies, Poggies, the beta art. <laughs> it's the Watcher in VR. That's good. That's a good meme. I like it. All right, I give Deceive Reality an A tier. You're going to notice this a lot, by the way. Let's take a break for a minute. You're going to notice this a lot with the Watcher. That the Watcher has a lot of high tier cards because the Watcher is fucking broken. The Watcher's only issue and the only curve that you have to get better with the Watcher is learning her. And I know that seems like everything with every class and every card or in every, you know, every game, whatever. But I've spent hundreds of hours on the Defect and the Silent and the Ironclad and I still lose very frequently. The Watcher, though, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you understand how to play the Watcher, and you have your eyes open, you're most likely going to get like at least to the Act 3 bosses. Defense for the Watcher immediately going F tier. They're trash. You don't give a fuck about them. The Watcher wants to hit things, not, not block things. The Watcher does not give a fuck to block things. Just wants to hit things. Deus Ex Machina. Unplayable card. When you draw this card, you will put two miracles in your hand. Upgraded, you'll put three miracles in your hand. You gain one energy off of each miracle. Let's turn this off so I can I can I can I can look at this. Okay. Uh Deus Ex Machina, I don't think it's all that good. I mean I think it's good. I'll add it to my deck sometimes. Um but I, I sometimes you draw it and you know it sucks if you have runic pyramid or you know retain cards and it adds a bunch of cards to your hand so you draw less cards and you don't really get to decide when it's drawn, you know. It's 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 a little bit of an awkward one. Uh, I do think the effect that it has is pretty good. Just gives you mana. Um, 
the turn that you draw it though you got to remember that you're drawing one less card and then you're getting two extra energy to play one less card so it's like it's awkward because now you have four cards in your hand which are a lot easier to play all of them than five and you almost don't need to use the mana the turn that you draw it so it's a little bit slow and for that i put deus ex machia to the first card of the list that is going to go into c tier deva form I think the upgrade of Deva Form is just so much better. I think that this is just like a cluttered mess on the screen. And I think this is just a more beautiful, simplistic version of the of the card. Deva Form, Ethereal, it's just like Echo Form. Whenever you uh whenever you you add it to your or whenever it comes into your hand, if you don't play it, it goes away unless you upgrade it. It's very similar to Echo Form. The only thing that it isn't similar to Echo Form is it's not cracked OP. It seems like it's OP, but it's not. And the reason that it's not OP is because it very quickly becomes useless. Like, would I like, would I like, uh, would I, would I like five energy per turn? Yeah. Would I like 10 energy per turn? What the, the fuck am I going to do with that? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't need all that shit. <laughs> like, is, is, is the conjure blade for X30? Yeah. Like, but then you're, you're waiting 10 turns to get 10 energy and then playing a thing and then trying to draw the thing like it's 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 so slow it's so it's so incompatible with so much of the watcher does and also like the watcher is the easiest class to never take an energy relic on already like the watcher is already the class that doesn't really require any sort of energy help through relics most of the time like the watcher is already the class that has a million things in her kit to infinitely shuffle her deck over and over and over again while manipulating your energy by going in and out of wrath and divinity and all these things in order to never run out of energy. Like, Deva Form is good. Don't get me wrong. And I can use it in a lot of decks. And Snekoi, uh, you know, it's amazing in a Snekoi deck. It's very similar to, to Echo Form in that. It's amazing in a Snekoi deck. But I saw someone in chat say it. So as in pure streamer fashion, I'm going to yoink their joke and say it for myself and then everyone in chat's gonna laugh and say keck leo like i came up with it deva form is b for bait the worst form question mark is it the worst form i think it's tied with demon form i think it's i think it's very much tied with demon form in terms of how often it's like readily playable i do think the demon form is slightly easier to craft a deck around like if you get a demon form off of like floor zero then to make it work more often and demon form i feel like i feel like demon forms uh immediate payout is a lot higher than day before devotion devotion is a way to get into divinity <laughs> devotion is a way to get into divinity uh if upgraded you're gonna start your turn get three mantra most fights you gotta remember here's the thought here here's here's the thing that we've talked about a lot in the statistics about slay the spire is most hallway fights in general go about five turns on average they go about five turns the watchers hallway fights <laughs> i've never seen a statistic on it but i would imagine are a fuck ton less <laughs> i would imagine that <laughs> the watchers average turns or the average amount of turns in hallway fights are a hell of a lot less so i think for that reason again devotion is another one of those slower cards but i think it is a slower card that is more readily useful I do, I do. It being a rare card kind of sucks. But devotion in a boss fight? Omega Poggy. For realsies. Because you can play around it. It's kind of like having an incense burner. It's something that you can see a counter of. You know exactly when it's going to tick over. Right? You know exactly when it's going to pop off, when it's going to when it's gonna nut, per se. So you can plan for it. Kind of like an incense burner. All right, next turn... I don't need to block as much because I got incense burner. Next turn, I, I can, you know, I can use my shit now so I can do this because of incense burner. Next turn, I need to be prepared to fucking kill everyone because devotion is going to proc me into divinity. I'm going to get a bunch of energy and in, in, in damage cards, right? And I think that it's really good comboed if you get an early prostate and you're, you're gaining just some passive divinity or some passive mantra. Um, you got one worship that randomly got added to your deck through a transform. Maybe take it. I don't know. It's your deck. I wouldn't take it all that all that much, but I do think it's a, it's it's somewhat playable. Uh, I'm gonna put it in C tier. I think it's very similar to Deus Ex Machina, where it's just again, it's just like a lot of watcher rares. It's a little bit slow, a little bit slow. Empty body. Next card coming up. We got the three empties coming up here. <laughs> it's, just, it's just good cards. It's just good beta art. 
Empty Body's a solid one. Uh, and all of the cards that just allow you to exit whatever stance you're in, because exiting a stance usually has some sort of benefit, except Divinity. Because exiting Wrath, you're no longer going to take a bunch of damage. Poggers. And exiting uh, a Calm, you, you, you're going to gain a little bit of energy. Poggers, right? We haven't talked about the other empty cards yet. And out of the other empty cards, I think it's the worst of the three, and we'll talk about that. Because right now it's 10 block at, at upgraded, 7 block unupgraded, but it gets you out of your turn, which is good. I'll usually add one to the deck. Uh, but I think in terms of the empty cards, in compar com comparing all three of them together, I think this is a high B tier card. Empty Fist is next. Empty Fist is next. Why? Uh, it's gonna, uh, real quick, in case any of the game devs are watching, I think me and a lot of my Twitch shatters, and I know other creators would like to know, why the fuck does this card deal 14 damage upgraded? <laughs> why the fuck does this card need to deal 28 damage in Wrath? Why? This is a common card. I can add eight of these to my deck and they'll be useful. It's insanely powerful. Not only the fact that I can get out of a stance with it, but also the fact that he deals 28 fucking damage in wrath. Like it, it not like I would take an empty fist if it dealt fucking seven damage upgraded. <laughs> like <laughs> because of the fact that it gets me out of my stance, but the fact that it not only gets me out of my stance, but one shot someone in the fight it's OP, man. I'm going to put Empty Fist in S tier. I think it's an S tier card. This is the thing about the Watcher, man. You'll notice something in the tier list. Where are all the common cards? This is why the Watcher is OP. Her most powerful cards are commons. You see them almost every single run. <laughs> They're OP, man. Like, Empty Body, Empty Fist, both commons. The one other Empty card... Is, a, is an uncommon, and it's empty mind. Empty your stance and draw two or three cards, which is insane, especially if you're running a lot of calm. It helps you shuffle your energy really, really well, right? I think I think empty mind is pretty self-explanatory. You can probably look at it, see that it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good one. You know, you're running something like a like an infinite rushdown deck, so you're trying to just like draw a bunch of times every turn and go in and out of stances, and you're like, ah, shit, I didn't draw my tantrum for the 17th time in the row. Oh, looks like I got my empty mind to try one more time, and you do, you get it every time. It's awesome. Uh, I would say that Empty Mind is high A tier. Not S tier, though, because it doesn't deal 28 damage. I'm sorry. <laughs> Eruption. This is one of the Watcher's starting cards. It's your first way that you're going to have in the runs to get into Wrath. I think it's a little bit clunky of two mana for nine damage. I usually don't want to upgrade it because by the time I get to my first campfire, I have an Empty Fist. <laughs> and I would rather upgrade my Empty Fist. But I do think that it's a good card because it's a way to get into Wrath. And any card that gets you into Wrath allows you to deal double damage. And dealing double damage, you can deal 28 damage for one mana. Who would have thought? Who would have fucking thought? No, I think Wrath is a pretty good card. I would put it in the B tier, though. Or, excuse me, Eruption. Uh, I'm actually going to put it in the C tier. And here's why. Am I happy that it's in my opening deck? Yes. But would I ever take a second one? Fuck no. Absolutely not. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I've realized something recently. Moving on with these with these cards is I've realized recently that a couple of cards are actually pretty strong. And I think one of them is establishment. I was putting, I was, I, I was thinking of establishment similar to devotion where it's like a little bit slow, but looking at it more, I think it's actually pretty good. And the run that we had yesterday, which might go on YouTube, but I did allow chat to have uh, some annoying sounds in the background. <laughs> uh, and I might not upload it to, to YouTube because of that. But we had double double establishment, which the double was a little bit much. Double Sands of Time and double Protect Plus. So we were having zero mana, 16 block over and over and over again. And it like Protect is already a decent card. It's already a decent card to just have block that sits in your hand and you get to use it when you want. But in boss fights, having them for zero mana, just shuffling in and out as I'm rushing down for... I double rush down, I think, too. Can we move our favorite card, Zapatia? Yeah, sure. Ban someone in chat who says that it's shit, and then, uh, yeah, we can we can move it up here. No, I think that Establishment, I've, I've recently think, is, is a lot better. It's obviously not going to be good in any deck. Uh, I think comboed with a card like Meditate, which brings a card from your discard pile into your hand and you retain it for a turn. It does retain it, reduce its cost. Doesn't work with Runic Pyramid. That's the number one question. Anytime this card shows up anytime that this card just shows up in my post boss reward on after act one or two everyone's always like someone in chat is always like dude does that work with runic pyramid no it doesn't 
Rudic Pyramid just doesn't discard your cards. It doesn't technically retain them, I guess. It's a weird wording, but usually the wording in Slay the Spire is pretty deliberate. Yeah, I think actually Establishment is, is really fucking good. And if it worked with Runic Pyramid, it would probably be the most powerful card in the entire game. But it doesn't, so I'm going to put it in low A tier. I don't think it's super good. Again, it's not going to work in every deck because not every deck's going to be running a bunch of things. I think you need to have the prerequisite of already running Retain cards. I think it's not one of those, I'm going to take it and then try to run Retain cards. You already got to have them running and already have them working, and then it just makes them a 10 times better. It makes them boss boss killing devices right the the retaining the protects and the retaining the sands of times making them scale that much faster is just really good really really good and remember they they stay reduced for the rest of combat so you redraw them because again i had two rush downs so i was drawing four cards every time i went into wrath i was redrawn them like crazy the hard fights the heart stood no chance evaluate again there's two of them in the in the tier list we'll put them in the same spot but evaluate It's a good block card. The thing is, is in the early days of the runs, you usually want a couple of strike pluses and like one or two defend pluses. Like not that many, right? I think with the defect, it's good to take something like a glacier, uh, an equilibrium, a, a leap, you know? It's good to have like one or two uh, leap uh, or uh, strike or defend pluses. But I think the Watcher wants even less, right? Because the Watcher just fucking hits hard. And the uh, it, the insight is cool because the insight, if you, I know you can't see it, it's uh, retain and it draws two cards. So you draw it, and you draw two cards. And you get to decide when you draw those two cards. But you gotta think about it. When you're drawing a card, you're drawing that card instead of drawing the card that you would have drawn if you didn't have that card. So therefore, when you hit the draw, you're technically only drawing one card if you draw the draw, the, or if you draw the turn that you draw the insight. And that's a lot of draws. I think that it's a little slow. Cause like we said, like we've said a hundred times, hallway fights don't last that long. And so shuffling an insight into your deck to be able to draw a card it doesn't feel all that good. And then you're like, oh, but it could be good against bosses, right? Here's the negative against bosses. You're playing against Time Eater. That's a boss that doesn't really like it when you play a lot of cards, right? So insights kind of suck. You're playing against the heart. The heart really doesn't like it when you play a lot of cards. It kind of sucks. It's it's underwhelming, I, I'll say. And and I, I don't think it's as good as I think it's counterpart, which is Sanctity, which we'll get to in a little bit. I don't think it's as good as Sanctity. They're both... It, this is a common card versus Sanctity being an uncommon. Um, also, it doesn't deal 28 damage for one mana. So, I'm going to put them both in the C tier. They're going to be surrounding Eruption, though. <laughs> Fasting. Fasting is a great card, especially if you have a Sneko-Eye deck with a Deva form. The Defect eats the donut. The, the Watcher denies the donut. Fasting, I think, is actually really good. I do. Like we've talked about, the Watcher doesn't struggle with energy manipulation. She doesn't. And so if you got a, uh, an energy relic, it was just like, ah, dang, I don't want to take Tiny House or Bing Bong. So instead, I'll take Cursed Key. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Highly recommend you take it in a lot of those situations. If you got a Deva form that works well, definitely recommend you take it. Uh, if you've got a lot of cheap ways to get in and out of, of Wrath and Calm, take it. If you've got the relic that makes you gain one more energy when you get out of Calm, definitely take it. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good card. I don't think it's going to be good in every single deck, but I think it's pretty good. And uh, pretty good is P, and upside down is a B. So it goes with B tier. Fear no evil. The next card on the list. Okay, I'll be real. <laughs> when the Watcher first came out, and I was like trying to learn her, I was watching someone streaming this game. And they played this card. And my initial thought was, wait, this card exists? The beta arts are too good, man. I didn't even know this card existed for a while. Because I had just never seen it. I don't know if it's just the most impossible card to add to your deck or what. But I hadn't seen it at all when I had played early runs. And now that I've seen it and, you know, played with it many, 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 many times, I can hands down say that this is an extremely powerful card. It's definitely not S tier worthy, but I do think it's high A tier worthy. There's not a deck that I probably won't take this in unless I maybe already taken Runic Dome. <laughs> and even then, I think this card is like a different kind of useful in a Runic Dome deck. It's very similar to Spot Weakness where it can detect if someone's attacking so you know. And if someone's not attacking, then I don't need to exit Wrath. <laughs> Flurry of Blows. This was a card. It still is a card. This is a card that when The Watcher first came out, I thought it was shit because we had played... You know, we've played the game, right? And zero mana attacks 
Never been really that good. All right, you got Anger. Not really that good of a card. Sometimes good early. You got Slice. Not really that good. Sometimes good early. You got Claw. And so when this, when when the Watcher first came out, I thought this card I was like, it doesn't seem that, that good. But the more I played, the more I learned that this is easily one of the most powerful cards in the, the Watcher's toolkit. It is amazing. It is awesome. It is easily S tier. Another common card to add to the S tier. The only S tier cards that we have currently for the Watcher are commons. This is why the Watcher is so fucking powerful. This is it. Flying Sleeves. Couldn't have guessed that. Flying Sleeves is an okay card. It's not good, not great. I mean, 12 damage for one mana. Leave it in hand. 12 times 2. That's a glass knife, right? Again, it's a common card. Not good, not great. Especially compared to uh, the other tools that the Watcher has. Not really much explaining to do. Stays in your hand. Gets to use it when you want. Procs uh, things like talk to the hand multiple times. I'd put it in a, in a, in a high B tier. Maybe a, maybe a mid B tier. I take it back. A mid B tier. Follow up. This is an interesting card. <clears throat> a common card that... I mean, if you see this early in the game, you're like, Dude, I am excited to have a follow up in my deck. It's awesome. It really is. It's a good attack. And in, in in Act 1 definitely wants you to have a lot of early attacks and, and be able to deal damage faster than the enemies can deal to you because a lot of the enemies are ruthless against your defenses and defense just isn't good in Act 1. And so things like follow-up are really just OP as fuck. <laughs> and I'll not many times take a follow-up late into the game, but if I have a follow-up in my deck, it's not one of those cards that falls off in use. I'm still using it all the time late into the game. So it's still very useful, but it's not often added later into the game. So for that, I don't think it's S tier, but I do think it's a very high in the A tier. Foreign Influence. Choose one of three attacks of any color to add to your hand. Exhaust. And then if it's upgraded, it costs zero that turn. I think this is one of those cards that has to be upgraded. What the fuck is going on in this? She's going to beat the bird with another bird. <laughs> Anyways. I think Foreign Influence is okay. I think it's a fun card. Regardless of whether you think it's good or bad. Um, I don't think it's insanely good. I think if you have a like a Toxic Egg or something, I might add one to the deck. Simply because you can find something that's really, really strong. Like a, like a Meteor Strike or a Bludgeon. Something like that. I, I do think it can be good. I don't think it's incredible. I'd probably put it in a, in a, in a low C tier. It's okay. If I transform a card into it, I'm not super upset. But I'm very rarely adding one to my deck. Foresight. Foresight. At the start of your turn, it's a power. You scry four fucking cards if it's upgraded. It allows you to... And it, it, this is before you draw. So this allows you to do so many powerful things. It is incredible. A must-take in almost every single deck. And for that, it is S tier. The first non-common non -co card in S tier. Rejoice. Huzzah. We've done it. It's... it's I I can't keep saying the same thing over and over again. I can't keep just commenting on how fucking good of these beta arts are. So, a couple of good things about uh, about Halt. If you get deck scaling, it scales twice with decks. That's poggers. I mean, I actually think that Halt is a really, really good card. I'm not taking it often, but the upgrade of it. This 14 additional block. Zero mana, 18 block? Huh? I think it's, what the fuck? If you're in Wrath all the time and, like, you know, switching stances and shit, fucking goddamn, it's insanely powerful. Now, here's the thing, though, is you can't add a lot of them to the deck. Or the more that you have, the more that you draw at a time and then you're stuck in Wrath or you can't get it, you can't even get into Wrath and then you're playing them for cheap and then it's just four block for zero mana, which isn't an unupgraded deflect at that point. Not that good, but it's also free block. I think that you can easily say that this is a high B tier type of card. Good job, Hulk. Way to go. Way to go. Keep it up. Proud of you. Indignation. The one other... I forgot about this earlier. The one other form of vulnerable that the Watcher has. Indignation's a great card. It really is. I mean, anything that gets you into dealing double damage or, I mean, applying vulnerable again. We talked about it. That's triple damage. If you're already in Wrath, it's insane. It's super powerful. And it gives it to everyone in combat. One mana, half a shockwave. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. Absolutely great. Indignation, definitely an A-tier type card. I'd say probably middle of the pack. I'm not going to add a bunch of them to the deck. Probably never add more than one, honestly. But 
Pretty good. Pretty good. It's counterpoint immediately next to it from indignation to inner peace. Uh, it's it's a it's another fucking insane card, by the way. It's another really really good card. I think I'm gonna put them right next to each other. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and add it up there. I think they're gonna go right next to each other. Indignation and inner peace. You've got a lot of stance switching going on. It's a great card to add because if you haven't found something like a rushdown yet or something like that to consistently have your draw, inner peace can definitely go, fill that fill that void. Uh, yeah, it's, it's switching stances is poggy. Being able to draw four fucking cards for one mana. Turns out is also pretty good. Judgment. This is a fun card. I think we can all agree. It's a fun card. It's not that good of a card. It does good against like some enemies in Act 2. Mainly baseball. But it's not that good. Like I'm excited to take it because I get to say judged. Every single time. Only 40 damage or more. Yeah, I mean one mana 40 damage. It sounds like it's really good. But because it's only sometimes I get to deal 40 damage. I hereby refuse to interrupt Frost Prime on yeah, this call. Yeah. Even right. with money. Interrupting right, right, right. is cringe. Yeah. Pogoff unzips 22. I think I think it's a D tier. I think Judge is in D tier. I, I'm not ever really excited. The worst, I think the like one of the worst uh, after boss things you can see is like Conjure Blade Judgment and then maybe Master Reality. It's very underwhelming. Just lucky. Just lucky. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, chat. I think it's an S2 card. Zero mana. Scry 2. Gain a little bit of block, a little bit of damage. It's OP, man. It's, it's just... Scrying is just nasty. Scrying is probably the most broken effect in the game, hands down. <sighs> yeah, I can't... There's nothing else to say about it, man. It's... <laughs> lesson learned. <laughs> the first... The first rare card going in S tier. It's definitely insane. I mean, it's... It's not always a must take, but there's, it's not, it's not only a card that I want to take often, right? It's like feed, you know, you're not going to take feed if you see it like midway through act three, most of the time. It's the same thing with lesson learned. It's an extremely powerful effect to get early and like the earlier the run, the better. It's just absolutely cracked out of its mind. If you can get your entire deck upgraded with it and it's fun. Cards like this are fun. Ritual dagger, lesson learned, feed, you know, hand of greed. They're just fun fun cards man it's it's such a uh uh neuron activation monkey brain type thing you know one in the chat if you agree it, it it's unbelievably incredible to feel that instant gratification of getting a bunch of gold getting max hp getting a card upgraded it's it's something else man i love it i'll take them all like water I think Like Water is one of the more underwhelming powers that the Watcher has. A lot of her powers are insanely powerful. I think Like Water is not one of them. I think it can be, and I think they're good stacked up on each other. Because, like, two Like Waters, just 14 block for two mana every single turn for free. It's pretty good. I mean, it is. It requires a lot of you, though. And so your deck has to be pretty stacked to remain in calm. I'm not, I'm not super in love with this, but I do respect that it can be good sometimes. I think unupgraded though is, unupgraded is essentially a worse metallicize because you're getting one more block than an upgraded metallicize, but it has conditions. Uh, I would say that this is a very low C tier card. Sometimes I'll use it. I've had good decks with it. Eh. Master reality. Master reality. Whenever your card is created during combat, upgraded. The issue with master reality is that all of the cards that the watcher has that create cards aren't that good that's the issue with it you know you got you got your uh creating a smite every turn where, where do we put that one d tier conjure blade is in d tier carve reality is in d tier alphas in d tier or f tier like it's not that good here's the thing as well is if you're taking it with something like a deus ex machina what what are the odds that you're gonna draw it before it? Is is random every single fight unless you got something specific. It's it just sucks. <laughs> like it's I actually think this is an F tier card. Another F tier rare card with the watcher. I think it's terrible. And it's because it relies on other cards that aren't good. Like it'd be one thing if, you know, because like a smite upgraded, I'm pretty sure to 16 damage, right? So it's plus four damage. Cool. I'm so glad that I took a power, which is bad during some of the endgame bosses. Uh, I 
then drew that power, played that power, just to get plus four damage on all of my future cards that, like, Rush Dreams, thank you for the 10 months, man. Yeah, it, it's definitely not that good. It's, it's very much not that good. Not excited about it, never wanting to take it. Poop poop butthole. Meditate. <sighs> Meditate. Put two cards from your discard pile into your hand and retain them. It's like another form of hologram, except that it ends your turn. But before it ends your turn, it also enters calm. So you're you're good if you got your like waters, if you got your mental fortresses, you get a little extra block. You're not wanting to be in wrath. It's a, it's pretty good. It's a very this is a, this is an all around good card to end your turn with because then it allows you to start off your turn extra hard. If you got very limited ways to get into wrath, you can bring it back in your hand, use it again. Um, and it does interact with establishment as people are yelling in chat. <laughs> yes. Now I think meditate is easily another S tier card. I don't think it's the best S tier card, but there's not many runs that I don't want to take one of these just because of how powerful the effect is. It's very similar to Hologram, like I said, that such a powerful effect to be able to use that card again and again and again. The main issue with Hologram as well is that mana issues, right? I'm trying to bring a card back into my hand and then play it again. I then have to have the mana to be able to do so. Whereas with Meditate, since it ends your turn and then you're starting off your next turn in Calm, that's like energy on energy on energy in order to play the cards that you brought back, you know? Mental Fortress. Hot take of the day. I think Mental Fortress is the number one bait card in the Watcher's list. As you can see, Toku is spamming all caps S. Lawsification, all caps S. I think it is the number one bait card for that reason. Do I think it's incredible? Very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's a good card. But I don't think it fits every single deck. I don't think it fits all the time. I don't think you always want to take one. It is, this is not defrag. And I feel like that's what people often, like in their brain, right? Their monkey brain neuron activation is you see it and you're, you go, it's a defrag, it's a defrag, it's a defrag. It's a defrag. Greg Poe, thank you so much for the prime. I really appreciate that, right? Where you can have like a hundred defrags in your deck and your deck's just getting better and better and better scaling. But I think the more mental fortresses you have, like it's it can be more difficult because then you're not drawing the cards that switch stances and you're you're flooding your deck with powers, which is usually a pretty bad thing to do. So yeah, I think that uh, mental fortress is going to go in the lowest possible bit of eight tier. I think it's a great card. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a good addition to a lot of my decks. But a lot of times people under underestimate how many times they actually switch stances in a fight. Yeah, I think I think people underestimate how many times they switch stances. And they think that it's going to be like this run winning thing that's going to allow them to gain a million block per turn and then never take any damage. Nirvana. <laughs> Couldn't have seen that one coming, could you? Nirvana, anytime you scry, you block four. This is one of those very situational cards. If you got a lot of scry in your deck, you take it. And a lot of the scry cards are S tier, right? All of them, actually. I think, I think every single card that it scries is currently an S tier. So that makes this card pretty good sometimes. But a lot of times, you don't have enough scry and it's just not worth it right like it's you gotta draw play this and then also do all the scrying things like yeah if you're doing a million things it's pretty good it's pretty good uh but i i think that you're taking this card less often than you're taking mental fortress but because scrying is such a powerful effect i think it's pretty good i'm gonna put this in high b tier actually i might be a controversial one but yeah i think uh I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty decent. Omniscience, I think, is a card that when the Watcher first came out, a lot of us thought was like a little bit hard to take. And then people slowly over time realized how much energy this fucking character creates. Like, holy balls. This character does not have any issues with energy. And Omniscience is fantastic. I think it is easily an S tier card. You can take it in almost any deck, any run. And if you get two of them, dude, Omniscience on Omniscience, and then Omniscience, the Omniscience with Omniscience, is good. Is 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 Pongy tier. Is very Pongy tier. Perseverance. <laughs> Perseverance. Uh, it's a retained card. Every time that you, you don't use it and it sits in your hand and retains for a turn, it gets a little bit better. It's okay. It's okay. I think that. Uh, the main issue with Perseverance is when you draw it, you're almost always going to want to use it. There's very few instances where you draw it and it doesn't immediately get played. Your deck has to be really, really far along 
in order to do that. And then usually by that time, you don't need a Perseverance. You're not lacking that block. So for that reason, I'm going to put Perseverance in C tier. Whenever I say that, whenever I say for that reason and for that reason, I always feel like I'm on some like reality show. <laughs> Listen here, Perseverance. I, you know, the, the chicken cordon bleu that you cooked, it just, it was, the chicken was well cooked, but the... Uh, the sauce that you use in order to garnish the dish just, it was a little bit too tart, and I, I wasn't a big fan of it. And so, for that reason, this is your last time that you're cooking on the show. Prey! I think Prey is a dog shit card. Any questions? You're paying one mana for no immediate value. It is bad. It is awful. Like zero, like yeah, you can give you a lot of mantra for for one mana, but like, it's pretty bad, man. The Watcher's way too fast playing for this. I think I've added this card to my deck intentionally one singular time, and it was okay in that one singular time. But I think most of the time this card is terrible. I'm gonna put it in the top of F tier. Not a big fan of it. And now we have come to the main event. The one that everyone cares about me talking about. This is the Claw of the Watcher. I think pressure points, the effect of pressure points, the mark effect, incredibly powerful. The only reason that pressure points is as bad as it is, is because it's the only card that does it. If there were other cards that did mark, it would be insane. When I get, I've had, I think I've had two runs Outside of the one that I, you know, it was a Pandora's box. You start out with a bunch of things. Other than the one time that I did that, I've had two successful, actual, just generic starting the run uh, pressure point decks. They popped the fuck off, man. It was a deck that I had like a bunch of calm and like empty minds and inner pieces so I could consistently draw it. And I think I found like three or four pressure points in each of the decks. It's insanely powerful. It is. It actually is. But it's the fact that it has to be run by itself and you have to you have to take one and rely on the thought of getting more but it's amazing it actually is it's it's does it hit artifact it it does it it does hit artifact yeah if an enemy has artifact you gotta you gotta you gotta hit through it's like poison yeah if it if there was any other card like if it had its own like crippling cloud or something like this is the deadly poison and then it had a crippling cloud where it did a small amount of aoe i don't know man i don't know I gotta put I gotta put it in an F tier. But don't forget, chat, that for $20 you can move any card that you want up a tier. Don't worry about that. Alright, prostate. If it was my prostate, it'd be an S tier. But considering that this is just any average runs prostate, any average players prostate, we gotta judge it based off the quality of the card. I think the main th the main reason why prostate isn't that good is because when you upgrade it, it doesn't upgrade the block. Straight up, I, 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 I think that if this upgraded like six block, I think the prostate would be an OP as fuck card. I, I, I think that it's okay as is. It's an okay card to take for zero mana, get some block, but it, it doesn't it doesn't do super well. I do think, however, uh, I think this is the easiest mantra card to take early on in the game that can shuffle you into a pretty successful mantra deck. So it's common. You'll see a lot of them, hopefully, throughout your run. I don't think it's super bait. I think it is probably going to be low C tier. It's free block, man. It's free real estate. It's pretty good. But not good at the same time. <gasps> Protect! Whoever whoever made the majority of these amazing beta arts needs their ass. Worship the prostate. Same. We were just talking about Protect and how I think that uh, I, I've undervalued some retained cards and I've undervalued some the effect of establishment and things like that. I think Protect is actually a really good card. Um... Two mana for 12 block. It's not terrible. Two mana for 16 block. Also not terrible. PP in PP Tia. Smile. Guys, you know, after second thought, I can't with good conscience. I gotta go back. I, I can't with good conscience leave pressure points in uh in 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 F tier. I done some soul searching in my life and I've done some reevaluating. And I I think that. This PP is not going to be directly touching the prostate. Then how am I ever going to get any pleasure in life? <laughs> okay, back to protect. <laughs> yeah, I think that protects good because I don't mind playing two mana for twelve block. It's better than two defends. It's 
you know, better. It's two defend pluses if it's upgraded, and I don't mind upgrading it. Spending an upgrade on this is pretty good. I don't mind playing it for two mana for a bit of block on the turn that I draw it. And then if I don't have to, I get to sticks around for a bit. It's pretty good. It's P good, man. It's P good. I'm going to put it in the top of B. Tier. I think protects is pretty good. I can add it to a lot of my decks. Not a lot of them. Ragnarok. <laughs> Ragnarok. This is one of those very fun rare cards. I always want to try to make a Ragnarok work. But it's kind of tough to make a Ragnarok work. And it's simply because it's random damage to random enemies. And it, you don't find a lot of rare cards early on. And the later in the game you go, the more enemies usually show up in combats. And random, random damage to random enemies while I'm in Wrath and spending three mana? Tough, at, to say the very least. Think about this. It's three mana while in Wrath for 50 damage unupgraded. For one mana, I can do 28 damage... <laughs> with Empty Fist. And so if I have two Empty Fists, that's two mana for 28 damage. Wait, Twitty, you gotta go back in the west. It's okay, I got a zero mana uh, eruption in my hand. Or zero mana crescendo in my hand. Sorry, I had to look up the name. <laughs> yeah, I think people in chat are talking about like Wreath of Flames and things like that. You know, we'll get to Wreath of Flames when we get there, but it's it, it requires some synergy. Ragnarok is a fun card if you can make work. The thing is, it's possible. It's not like an Omega deck or an Alpha deck where you're going to get one in a million that's going to work. Or a Pressure Points deck where it's going to be one in a million that works. A lot of decks can add a Ragnarok to it. You can make a lot of Ragnarok decks work well. It's a little bit easier, but it's still a little bit of one of those like demon for me cards that you're going to want to take a lot of times because it looks fun. It sounds fun. But then it's, uh, it's a little harder to play than you thought and it sucks a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> PP in PP tier greater than. <laughs> Pressure points to S tier. Stay frosty, frost. I'm sorry to disappoint you with your $60. How many? Put your PP away from my prostate. Wait. Oh, I renamed this tier. Whoops. Are you happy now? God forbid I put another card in B tier because it's going to push everything down. If I have to put another card in B tier, I'm moving pressure points to S tier so that I don't have to uh, I don't have to keep moving it up and push it off screen so you can't see it anymore. Ragnarok, I'm going to put in C tier. In the high C tier, though. Because again, I think you can add it a lot, but it's, it's tough. Reach Heaven. Reach Heaven is another one of those cards that creates another card. And it creates a card called Through Violence. Zero mana, retain... And it deals 20 damage. 20 damage. Which, with Wrath, costing 0 mana, so you can always play it when you get in Wrath, it's 40 damage for 0 mana. So essentially, for 2 mana, you're dealing upgraded 30 plus 40. It's a pretty good, it's, it's a pretty good value, right? It's a pretty good value. And most of the time, you'll draw through your deck at least once. So if you get to reach heaven early, you'll most likely draw the through violence, and it'll be useful in the fight. I think it's an okay card. I think adding it early, you get a free Gremlin Knob win, right? You get a free uh, Lagavulin win. I think it's an okay card. I'm not going to add it to a lot of decks, and I'm not going to ever add it late. It's a good early game thing. I'll put it in the middle of C tier. It'll get you through the early game, and you'll be happy that it was there, but then you won't be happy that it's there later, unlike a card like Follow-Up, right? That's the difference. Unlike a card like Flying Sleeves. Unlike a card like Empty Fist. 28 damage for one mana, by the way. Just curious, is this supposed to be serious? Uh, so I rate them seriously, and then chat can give me twenty dollars to manipulate it. I have so far gotten two hundred dollars, two hundred sorry, two hundred forty dollars to move pressure points into its own tier. That's it. <laughs> Everything else, I'm serious. I am serious about like its its functionality, its use, um, and yeah, how often I'll take it, how good I think it actually is. Rush down. This is a must take in ninety nine percent of our watcher decks. I'm, I'm not really ever running a watch deck that I'm like, dang, I don't want to draw. I don't want to have a rushdown. Sometimes, I mean, very rarely. But I like rushdown. I think rushdown is, is fucking cracked. It, it, it literally takes your, your stance swapping builds and uh, takes them to the freaking moon. Uh, so I definitely think it is S tier. I think it's like middle of the pack S tier. Rushdown is best watcher card. I think that the best card in the entire game is cut through fate. I'll, I'll die on that sword. Cut through fate, hands down, I think is the best card in the entire game. A spell focus. 
seems like alpha is not in the alphabetically correct tier. It stands for alpha after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does stand for alpha. That is true. Thank you for the 80 bucks, Magicorn. Sanctity. We talked about its counterpoint. Uh, was it fucking evaluate, right? Evaluate earlier. This is the uncommon version, essentially, of that card. If you, the last skill you played was, a, or the last thing you played was a skill, which a lot of times you can just use Miracle. It's really easy. You draw two cards. It's good. That's some good shit, man. I love having a Sanctity or two in my deck. I think they're good. Block plus draw. Mm, mm, mm. That's good. That's good eating. I think the the only the way that would make this card like actually uh, worse, but healthily worse. I think would be unupgraded, drawing one card, and then upgraded would draw two. I think that would be a nerf that I could see the devs doing, even though this card isn't one of the more broken cards that the Watcher has, but I think would be healthy and I would still use it. Uh, yeah, no, I think Sanctity's kind of nuts, kind of cracked. I'm putting it here, man. I need to put it here. God damn it, chat. I need to move PP down. <laughs> I need to move PP down. I'm sorry. There you go. Sands of Time. Sands of Time, four mana. Retain, if you retain it in your hand, it, it, it costs less and less over time. If you draw it late into a fight, it's usually not that big of a deal for the Watcher just to jump into Wrath, get up to four mana, and then be able to deal with whatever, or wait one turn and then be able to deal with whatever. I mean, the fact that you can deal 52 damage for zero mana at some point in a fight, kind of fucking cracked. Phenomenal Act 1 card, said someone in chat. I think this is a phenomenal late game card. I think you can build entire fucking decks around Sands of Time. I think that this I think that this card is very, very easily an S tier card. And I think the probably the most powerful solo retain card in the game, as it's an S tier, right? The other retain card being Meditate that's an S tier, but it retains other cards. How does this interact with Vault? Positively. <laughs> if you play Vault, it does reduce its cost, yeah. <laughs> wow. God that is this card racist? I would say kinky, not racist. Mm. It's supposed to be a, like in a locker room. Where are the lockers, dude? Where are the lockers? <laughs> anyways, anyways, it was, it was a stupid meme, a stupid joke. Moving on. <clears throat> Moving on. Sash Whip is the counterpart to the one that gives vulnerable crush joints. Instead of uh, being a skill and giving vulnerable... It's if the last card in combat was an attack and it gives weak. I uh, I still think it's good. I think it's good. I don't think it's quite as good as Crush Joints, but I'm probably going to add it to most decks. I'm going to put it in the high B tier. Why were there two Crush Joints? Because Crush Joints is that good, dude. Maybe you should get better. <laughs> All right, Scrawl. Moving on. This is my one of my favorite beta arts in the game. It's got a SpongeBob. If you don't use the beta art, you're dead to me. And this is also one of the absolute most powerful cards in the game. Hands down. It is insanely powerful. Super duper powerful. Here, I'll do this, actually. I think I can do this. Oh. We have the technology. Check this shit out, though. Yeah, I mean, one mana or zero mana and drawing as many cards as it can possibly draw you. Like, that's... If you're not putting this in S tier, I, I don't think that you value draw in this game at all. And you probably are not winning many runs. So, yeah. Scrawl is disgustingly good. Very, 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 very good. Next up, Signature Move. Signature Move... This is a card that I've tried to make work. And I think that it can work for a very short amount of time. Until... Until you get to late game. And then it is a garbage ass card. But early in the game, I think you can make it work sometimes. Maybe. A little bit. But it's... Just take any other card, dude. You could do one mana for 28 damage. Did you know that? Uh, Clash is easier to use. Yeah, I don't know why it needs to cost two mana. I think that's the issue with it. Is the fact that it's so expensive. Sorry, I forgot to put it in F2. I was just moving on without even touching it because it was so gross. All right, Simmering Fury. Another way to get into Wrath. It is a little bit of a... a, a uh, it's, it's, a, it's a card that, you know, takes a little bit of time to build, but it is one singular turn. <clears throat> so it's, it's pretty good as like an end of turn thing. You're in calm, you know, that you're going to draw some good stuff next turn and then you can draw more things and then get extra energy because you're leaving calm. I think it's really fucking good combo. I definitely think it's a uh, a mid A tier card. I'm not going to add more than one to most decks, but it's pretty good. It's P good. It's P good. Spirit Shield. Oh yeah, the Watcher beta card. The Watcher beta art's kind of nuts. Spirit Shield, I think, uh, is actually pretty good. 
I actually think it's pretty good. I mean, like, if you draw it's a normal five card hand, you play it unupgraded. That's three times four. That's 12 block. It's not bad, man. It's not, it's not dog shit. But how often does the Watcher still have that miracle in her hand? Unupgraded. That's three times five. 15. And how often do you have a scrawl? Or you have a, a, a rushdown? Or you have a, a, the, the inner piece? You got something that allows you to draw a little bit more. You've got more things. You know, you got to collect it's adding things to your hand. Runic Pyramid, right? Yeah, like there's a hundred different things that this character has to draw. It only gets better. I Definitely not a card that you're going to take and then try to add draw to your deck. I definitely think it's something that you're going to take second. But for that, I think it's a, it's a high B tier card. It's, it's definitely a very good engine. I, I use it very frequently, I feel like, in, in specific types of decks that, that yeah, just good. There's a controversial opinion, chat. I think... <laughs> I think that Strike on the Watcher is D tier. I don't think that it's F tier. I actually think that strikes are very useful on this character because they deal a lot more damage than on other characters because you're oftentimes using Wrath. It's very good. It's pretty good. I don't mind having my strikes in my deck. And the Watcher only starts with four, which means like, if I get rid of one, dude, three strikes in a deck is really easy to manage. That ain't bad, man. Ain't even having four if you're drawing well isn't that bad to manage. It's pretty good. Yeah, one mana, 12 damage is pretty pog. You get the upgrade event, one mana, 18 damage. Mm. Study. Wow. It's some lo-fi beats. You got the happy flower. It's a beautiful art. Holy shit. Unfortunately, though, I think this, this card is pretty trash. <clears throat> I, 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 I do think that this card is, is pretty shit. It does allow you to draw. That's pretty cool. But you got to draw this card, and then you got to play this card for mana. A lot of times, you know, it's, it's, it's like a card that feels like it wants to be upgraded, but that's kind of a waste of an upgrade because you could be upgrading better cards. Once you play the Watcher card, or you play this card, you could have drawn another card, right? You could have drawn another card. And then, whenever you draw your first Insight, you could have drawn another Insight, or a, another card instead of that Insight. So then you play that Insight to draw two, but then drawing that two draws you the two cards that you would have drawn if you hadn't already played the insight and then drawn the insight or played the study and then drawn the insight. So what the fuck am I doing? It takes so long for this card to get moving. And there's a lot of late game bosses that don't like you playing a lot of cards. Time Eater, the heart, right? And so, yeah, does it scale against bosses? Yeah, sure. But if you're taking one of these for beating boss fights, and then you get against one of those other guys and you don't have more draw, what are you going to do? You're going to eat shit and die. That's what you're going to fucking do. It's, it's too much setup for too little value when most hallway fights win in five turns, which means you're never going to get the value out of all this draw. It's going to take a really, really long time for you to get value out of this. It takes too long. And for that, I think it's F tier. I think it's dog shit. I'll put it at the top of F tier, though. It's the most runnable of the F tier cards. Swivel. She's swiveling. Swivel, I think, is an underrated card. Maybe it's not. But I, I, I've i recently been using Swivel a little bit more. And it's definitely not a, a thing that you're going to want in every deck. But I think it's pretty good. I think, I think it's not bad. I really don't. It combos well with Ragnarok. And therefore, I fucking love it. Swivel's significant value in Sneko decks or Pyramid decks. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the run that we had yesterday, we had... Uh, um, we had double sands of time. What else do we have, chat? Hand of greed. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to swivel our hand of greed. And with swivel, we were able to hand of greed multiple targets in a fight. Because the thing with hand of greed is it costs a little bit of mana. So making it not cost mana allowed us to successfully block that turn while also killing one of the many guys in the fight. And then, yeah. Yeah. Now, I think for that, I'm going to put swivel in like super high super duper high c tier dude th th this is just we're too we're the the tier list is too it's too uh is too big it's too long the tier list is too big talk to the hand this is an s tier card do we need to talk about it it's an s tier card tantrum i think also tantrum is probably an s tier card maybe high a maybe here's an argument for it but i think S. I think tantrum is incredibly good I, I usually don't want more than two tantrums in the deck, 
but with rushdown the fact that tantrum puts itself back into your draw pile means you can just keep cycling your forms over and over and over again keep throwing a freaking tantrum it's kind of nuts man i think tantrum is i'll say i'll put it in high a tier the highest of a tiers but the fact that it shuffles is, is really really good third eye wow dude some of this art is just kind of nuts i'm gonna leave it at this actually third eye unfortunately i'm so sorry to tell you this you are the first scry card that i will not be putting in s tier uh i think that it is a low a tier type of card i don't mind adding one to the deck but the fact that i don't get any draw out of it i'm not super into it third eye is massively overrated imo i think that the issue is is that with foresight right you scry and then draw with cut through fate you scry and then draw with um with with just lucky you don't like you're not necessarily wanting to draw there you're just wanting to like weed the deck a little bit but a third eye unless you're comboed with draw borderline unpickable that i think you're wrong i think five scry is an insanely powerful effect and having an upgraded block card i mean taking one early is really really strong right because you can just have an, a, a a defend plus is is pretty good and just wouldn't put a lot tranquility i think we i think i, I you know what I think Tranquility should go right next to its counterpart, Crescendo. But slightly worse because it's not putting me in Wrath. <laughs> Vault. S tier. Any questions? That's beautiful. Any questions on Vault going in S tier? No questions. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about it a bunch. The, the Watcher doesn't have issues with energy manipulation. If this was on a different class, I would think differently of this. I actually would. Because other classes... A three cost card would literally just kind of be a mulligan, right? But the fact that the Watcher deals with energy so easily, she can usually deal a bunch of damage, draw a bunch of cards, get rid some retain cards or something, and then vault. Like it's it's an and then vault. It's not just I draw my cards plus vault, my hand sucks, I vault. That happens sometimes, but it's it's disgusting. And it benefits you so much because if you have things that like sands of time that reduce their cost every turn or an establishment you fucking prox me my cards get cheaper like it's so good vigilance vigilance is the card that you start with that gets you into calm similar to eruption except when you upgrade it instead of it reducing the cost it gets a little bit more powerful in terms of the amount of block i'm happy to have one in the deck i think it's very similar to eruption i'm going to put it in c tier happy to have one in the deck i'm not going to be happy if i wanted to ever add a second one to the deck which doesn't ever happen but yeah wallop <laughs> bonk wallop's a pretty cool card the main issue with wallop is that if you're hitting block it doesn't do anything it won't give you any block uh but it's pretty good i mean with with uh with eruption it's it's, it's or with wrath it's obviously very good giving you the possibility of two mana for 24 block and then if you can get out of eruption it's you know it's, it's fairly fucking good but i think it's a tad bit clunky uh, you can't really usually add more than one because again the watcher likes cheap cards to play often but i think that it can go in the bottom <clears throat> the bottom of b tier it's just a little bit it's a little bit slow wave of the hand <clears throat> wave of the hand is disgustingly cracked s tier card uh, maybe not s tier you know it's an a really good card. I mean, if you have a talk to the hand of the deck, it's disgusting, right? But the effect gets a little bit too powerful after a while, right? Because for the fact that if I have uh, if I have a talk to the hand and I'm stance switching, I'm adding like 87 weaken to the to the person on that turn. Like, it's not that useful. Uh, so for that, I think it's probably like mid A tier. I like it because it's a good weakening effect. And again, on another class, you wouldn't be able to use this as well because that one mana really matters a lot on another class. But on this class, I think it's very easy to use. Weave. Weave, I think, is, is you know, it's the counterpart to Flurry of Blows instead of uh, any time that you switch stances, anytime you scry, you put this back in your hand. I don't think that you get as many scrying cards as you do stance switching cards usually in the game. So I don't think that this can go in a S tier position, but I do think it can go in a low A. I think Weave is just as strong depending on what your deck is doing, but it seems like more often you're going to be adding more uh, crescendos and tantrums and things early in the game. So you could more easily add a flurry of blows versus adding uh, a lot of a lot of scry. Because if like, let's be real here. If we were 
offered a lot of wrath effects or a lot of scry effects early in the game, what would you most likely take more of in order to beat the early game? What makes a more powerful late game deck? Probably scry. But what makes a more powerful early game deck in order to win the game? Early. Wheel kick. He's on a, she's on a game show this time. Wheel kick, I think, is like, eh. Is it okay that to take early? It's like a predator from the silent, where except it's like happening right now. So you're playing two mana and then needing to do other things with the mana. Um, and like I'm not usually going to take it late into the game because there's so many other things that can allow me to draw. And so the only time that I'm taking it usually is early, which is the, the time that playing something for two mana is at its most difficult. So it's good, but it's not great. I mean, the fact that you can get 40 damage for two mana is definitely no one mana 28 damage, but it's okay. It's okay. And for that, I'll put it right next to Wallop. I think it's a very similar in terms of effectiveness of uh, winning you the game. Windmill Strike. It is the other card that you think of along with Sands of Time in terms of the more you retain it, the more powerful it gets. The main issue with it, though, is it stays at two cost and it scales very slowly. Like, retaining this in one turn, that's 11 damage, 22 damage for two mana. Another turn, it's is, is 15 damage, 30 damage for two mana. Like, Empty Fist, man. Empty Fist. I think it's okay. I think it can synergize well with things like establishment and things like that. And if I needed to take one early, I think it can be good because of the fact that it retains. It'll allow you to beat early elites like Gremlin Knob because usually when you take these more early game powerful cards, you want to hope that you get to use them when you go into Wrath, right? And so by one of them sticking around, then you can wait until you get your eruption or whatever. And it will allow it to deal its its big... Uh, it's, it's big, big damage. Also, if you can't tell, uh, apparently the characters in Slay the Spire are uh, big friends, big fans of fracking. <laughs> they think that the windmills just look ugly on their land. That's what it is. I'm gonna put it in low B tier. I think it's I think it's up there with Wheel Kick and Wallop in terms of effectiveness. Wish is a very, very strong card to get early in the game, as it can gain you a lot of gold really the effectiveness of it is if you're needing if you're needing to use wish for another one of these effects it's most likely a boss fight that you weren't very much prepared for <laughs> um yeah wish is really just like a three mana money generator which is awesome and it's great for that and you can definitely build a deck around it i actually suck balls with this card I am so bad at being able to get Wish off. I just seem to not be able to grasp how to run a deck properly with it. I probably need to still learn. Um, I do think that it's probably a low A tier type card. It's just another one. It's 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 one of those cards too that's similar to Feed or similar to uh, Lesson Learn where adding it later in the run isn't as powerful and I might not do it. I might take something over it. Omniscience plus Wish, great. It's a great effect. It really is. It's, it, it'll scale you fast. But, yeah, I think if you find it late into the game, you're not super excited about it. So, I, I, if you find it early, it can be great. And you can definitely kind of craft your deck in order to function with it super well. But I just seem to suck balls with it. Worship! Gain five mantra. Upgraded. Retain it and gain five. <laughs> That's chant. Yeah. If, if it's upgraded, it's retained. I think worship plus. Very good card. I think worship alone, pretty shit card, actually. Like, I think it's probably an F tier card alone. I think Worship Plus, though, is amazing because then it allows you to run with things like Devotion, things that are easier to play, like Prostate or Devotion. And then once you get into the realm of being able to pop off and use these large attacks and use this, it's a good uh, it's a good Divinity combo enabler. I wouldn't take this first in order to proc my Divinity unless I had something like a Toxic Egg. And then I might take it because a lot of times the Watcher does just have excess energy that she can throw around. I think it's probably, for me, a high C tier card. Wreath of Flames, the final card. I use the beta art because I think it looks cool. Your next attack deals additional damage, which does scale with things like Wrath. And again, like chat's gonna scream very rapidly. Ragnarok, woo! Ragnarok, yay, woo! I think Wreath of Flames kind of sucks balls. <laughs> I think because the Watcher has so few cards that are multi-attacks, I think it's bad. Because at its best, with Wrath, right? If you're using Divinity, that's another thing. But with Wrath, it's 1 mana 16 damage. Now, if, yeah, you already taken a Flying Sleeves early on in the run, or you've got, you know, transformed into a Ragnarok, it's great. 
you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um. Just making sure that we're still good on PP being in PP tier. On its own. Wait, on wait top. for the f uh, smile. I, I'll put you on top, baby. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I don't think Wreath of Flames is all that good. I'm not opposed to taking it earlier on in the game, but again, then it's pretty bad against things like Gremlin Knob because it's a spell. It's, it's, it's pretty meh. It's pretty underwhelming. It's a very fun card, though. And for fun, just because it's fun, I'll put it at the very tippity top of D tier. Or dick. Anyways, uh, that's the Watcher tier list. Let's go ahead. Hold on. Just need to re-edit my scene real quick. So the completed tier list is as it is. We've got Pressure Points as top because, you know, we just... We really think the pressure points is such a good card. Here, let me uh, let me scroll out so you can. You want to take a screenshot of the entire thing? There it is for you. Just remember that alpha is is uh it's bloated. Alpha is not up there. It's supposed to be an F tier, but I got paid money. Again, money. We like money. It's all about the money, baby, and the Mets. But yeah, 